Hey Balancers and welcome back to season four of the Balance Theory podcast. I'm your host Erica and season four marks four years of me doing the podcast. My background is as a corporate lawyer and I really felt four years ago this strong gap between what I was doing every single day and having this curiosity and needing and craving this space to really learn more about myself and grow as a person. So the podcast was born and if you're stumbling across it for the first time or whether you've been following us for a little while now, this podcast is perfect for anyone who's also in that self-development journey, who's curious to get to know a little bit more about themselves and really facilitate or create a life that is more aligned for them. Now, today's episode specifically is a really, really powerful mindset shift that I have adopted in the last couple of years. And I can honestly say it has made an absolute difference to the way I show up, the way I deal with challenges and the way I just move through different things. So I think for many of us, it's very uh, easy or it's a, it's a very shared experience that we can fall into a victim mentality. What I mean when I say that is, you're sitting in a job that you don't like. You're in a relationship that you feel stuck in. You find yourself in a bit of a difficult financial situation or you're not a big fan of the environment that you're working in. All these different things we can feel a victim of, right? But there's a very strong power in not what happens to you. So I love this quote that it's not what happens to you that defines you, but actually how you respond and react to it that does. So today's mindset shift, or I guess quote or way of thinking is a very powerful way for you to take back control of your life in a way that puts you in the position of being empowered, of taking charge, and not just feeling like you are subject to the things going on around you. Because when we're in that position, it's very difficult to move in the direction we want. It's very difficult to realize the things that we wanna do and actually create a life that we want for ourselves. So my hope is for anyone watching today's episode is that if you're feeling stuck or unsure of how to move through something difficult, maybe it's a challenge, maybe it's an obstacle, maybe it's something really difficult that you're facing. My hope for you is that this gentle reframe, this new way of thinking is gonna really revolutionize the way you show up for yourself. And I can guarantee you by the end of this episode, you'll be able to start applying it. And if you do, will be one of the most powerful things that you can do for yourself. Now, just before we dive in, don't forget to hit subscribe and the bell notification so you don't miss any new content that comes out and it also really helps us reach more people like me and you who are on a similar path and really need the same kind of content or way of thinking to help them shift into creating a life that's more aligned for them. So just before I share what this revolutionary mindset shift was for me, I'd love to create like a little bit of a thread in the comments below. So I want everyone watching to drop either a quote or a mindset shift or something really powerful that's helped them really make a significant change. Or, you know, when you hear those things and they just stick with you, it's something that never leaves your side and really has a profound impact on your life. Drop it in a comment below and we can create like a little bit of a thread of quotes uh, or like mindset shifts that everyone can read through and take from each other what's been really empowering for them. But now on to the mindset shift that has been so powerful for me, so incredibly profound that I decided to dedicate an entire episode to it. So it actually comes from an author. His name is Eckhart Tolle and he wrote one of my favorite books ever called The Power of Now, which I strongly recommend adding to your reading list if you've not yet read it. In fact, I've actually read it a few different times and I find that each time I pick it up and give it a read, it kind of resonates with me at different moments in time. That's one of many books he's read. He's also got a lot of incredible content online. You can check his stuff out on YouTube as well. But there is one particular thing that he shares, a way of thinking that he has promoted that has just been game changing for me. Are you ready for it? It's whatever the present moment is presenting for you, accept it as if you had chosen it to be a part of your life. So it's basically this concept or idea that whatever you're navigating through or dealing with at the moment, to accept that as that as though you had chosen to actually move through it, as if as if you had been the author of your own story and you chose for that thing to feature in your life's path. And for me, this is really interesting because when I sit back and I think, if you found out that you had authored this particular chapter or this particular obstacle or challenge in your own story, how would that change 
the way you're thinking about what you're going through? How would that change the way you see its role in your life? I really love this idea as a means to shift out of this victim mentality of things are happening to me. I can't control what's going on in my life. You know, I'm a victim or I'm, I'm kind of stuck, right? It's that feeling of being stuck in situations or challenges that you have no control over. Shifting that into, okay, if I actually placed this as a necessary thing I had to go through, why? right? Why would I do that? What would that mean for the longevity of my life? Why would I be putting myself through this hardship? Now, I do want to pause and say that we each go through unimaginable things, horrible things, really tough things, really challenging things. And this mindset shift is not to negate or take away from any difficult emotions of any pain, of any suffering that naturally comes with those difficult moments in life. As I kind of said in the intro, it's less about what happens to you. Sometimes the honest truth is that is outside of our control and we should never try to control everything in our lives because I think that's a very impossible pursuit. But the aim of this is to say it's not what happens to us that defines us, but the way we respond or react. So again, whilst it doesn't necessarily change the way we feel about things or the difficulty of things when they come up for us, It's actually saying, how do we shift through that and and take a new perspective onto it? What are we going to choose to make this happening mean about us or our life? Because you do have a choice. You, You may not have a choice in what happens to you, but you can decide what you choose to make that mean in terms of your life and yourself. Take a simple example of if you got fired from a job that came a bit left field, right? You weren't expecting that. You can't control whether you're fired or not but you can control what you choose to make that mean about yourself. Does that mean that you're incompetent, that you're not worthy of having a particular role? Or does that mean that maybe that was a mismatch opportunity and there's something else better for you in the future? When you get that next job, you'll look back and think, thank God I was let go of that job or I never would have found this next opportunity. And so on that note, sometimes it's not instant. It's difficult to take this hindsight perspective, zoom out, when we're in the thick of difficulty and the struggle. And I think there is a really important place for navigating those difficult emotions, for feeling the feels, for just letting yourself process the difficulty rather than necessarily skipping to, okay, well, why would I have put this in my life? So I think that's a necessary evolution or or part of going through challenges. But when you are ready to take the time to ask yourself, well, what am I gonna choose to make this mean? Then you can start leaning into the question of, well, what if I had placed this challenge in my own life? You know, that that's kind of a, a really good reframe to put yourself in the author's shoes and say, if I was writing this story, why would I have included this hardship? I remember coming across this really nice quote or visual on Instagram and it was like you reading the chapters of your life and you're reading chapter three, let's say, where you're going through this really difficult struggle and you're thinking, God, this sucks. This is really tough. Like, what the hell? Then you fast forward chapter five, chapter six, and you have this enlightening moment of, oh, now I can see why I went through that challenge in chapter three. I can see why that was necessary for me to be the person I needed to be to take the opportunities in chapter five and six or to prepare myself for the next level of my life or the next chapter. And so I think when you are emotionally in the position where you can ask yourself this question, it is such a powerful reframe and it really cuts you off from being tied to things in your past that often keep people stuck for a really, really long period of time. If you've been you know, dwelling on something that happened to you 10, 20 years ago, then maybe it's time for you to sit and ask yourself, well, why would that challenge have been presented for me? Why was it necessary for my own growth? And this simple question alone has been so profound in my life. It's really helped me not dwell in that victim mentality of I'm powerless in terms of my life. I have no control over my life because as I said before, like the truth is we we don't necessarily control what happens to us, but our power lies in what we choose to do next, how we choose to move forward and what we choose to make that mean about our lives. So because I think This is a little bit easier to digest with a past situation because we've had the time to process the emotions. There's been a little bit of space that's passed. And so we can actually zoom out and look at it with fresh eyes. I think it would be interesting for anybody watching who is thinking this is a really interesting concept to think about a past challenge you've been through. 
whether it be the example I gave, like maybe you were let go from a job, maybe a relationship ended unexpectedly, whether that be romantic or friendship that you took on really difficult. Um, you know, maybe something didn't work out that you were trying to do, whether it be a business or a career, any kind of challenge that you've been through in your life. If you actually stop and reflect now at what that key moment meant in terms of the trajectory and where you've now come to. It's really interesting to think about the role that that played in developing the character or the person you are today that needs to be you to achieve and embrace all the opportunities that you've actually got today. There are kind of six key ways I feel this really helps us move through challenges and take back that control of what's happened to us uh, that I just wanted to share that might stick out for you. Maybe maybe this will help you actually move through anything that you're struggling with right now, or maybe it'll give you a little bit of perspective in terms of things you've gone through in the past. Maybe it's something you can't shake. Maybe it's something you're holding on to. Um, and really the bottom line is when we're pinned down to these things in our past, it's really difficult to move forward because they just hold us back. They keep us in like excuse land. You know, you think, oh, but because that happened to me, I can't do this, this and this because you've, you've made an active choice to say, well, that now means I'm a victim. I have no control. I have no power over what happens to me. So really shifting into this, authoring our own story and selecting the challenges we go through to prepare us for what's to come is so powerful. These are the six ways it might kind of happen or become a realization for you. The first one is acceptance. So you might just generally find greater acceptance in things that have happened to you in the past, which is a nice, peaceful way to make your peace, I guess, with, with what's happened to you, which allows you to move forward. Also, I think uh, if you accept that things are not necessarily random and maybe they're, they're hand, hand-selected things that happen to you to prep you for what's to come, it's just a completely different way at looking at the obstacles in your life. Um, as I said, for me personally, in my career, in my podcasting journey, in moving overseas, having this mentality has just given me a lot more empathy and a lot more patience with things that are happening to me because I have this ultimate trust that it's all a part of wherever I'm meant to be heading. And that's really just changed not necessarily the difficulty or the emotional uh, toll that can come with challenges and obstacles, but definitely the element of trust and just letting go and knowing that one day I'll look back and be able to see why I'm going through the challenge I'm going through. The second one, the second thing you might come to realize through this mindset shift is a sense of empowerment. So we spoke a little bit about how when things happen to us, it's really easy to sit in this victim mentality. This simple question just creates so much empowerment because you actually go back into the shoes of being in control of your life. And again, that's not control of what's happening to you uh, and controlling what challenges you get to face, but it's controlling what, you, what they you choose to make those things mean about you. And if you take the approach of you've put yourself through necessary challenges or you've handpicked these things for you to go through, you can see that it's all a part of a master plan of getting you prepped for the person you're meant to be or the person that you're growing into, which is a very, very empowering thing. It's something I've personally found completely liberating when it comes to challenges because there would be no growth without your challenges. So you need to go through some challenges to level up, to change, to embrace different things. And so if you were to handpick what those would be to get you to where you want to go. That is such an empowering approach, in my opinion. The third one is resilience. So embracing this for me has helped me build a lot of resilience. Again, I really want to stress it, it doesn't make me feel any happier about challenges or setbacks, failures, rejections. All those things suck in any you know, in any experience, they're not nice things to go through, but it builds this resilience. So rather than me taking a rejection, right, if someone says no to me to come on the show or, you know, you pitch for something or you go for a job interview and you don't get the role, you're not dissuaded from continuing to apply and apply for things and reach out to new people and reach out for new sponsors, you're not completely stopped in your pursuit because you're not choosing to make that mean that you're not worthy or that the rejection means there's something wrong with you, right? You build a resilience because you understand that this is just the necessary hurdles you need to go through to get to where you want to be. The fourth thing, and this one's really interesting and might seem a bit strange in the context of challenges, but it's actually gratitude. So again, 
if I'm feeling really crappy, if I'm having a bad day, if I'm dealing with some rejection, it's not that I'm sitting there so happy because this is a challenge I'm going through that's going to make me a better person. It sucks any way you look at it. But I do have this underlying gratitude because I can appreciate with this mindset shift that it is necessary to get me to where I want to be. You know, I love this idea that if it was easy, everyone would have it, right? And so I just think sometimes these are the necessary barriers to entry, the rejection, the U-turns you have to make, the change of direction or like the agility you need when you're trying different things or trying to create something different for yourself. And so I think when you're going through it, just to have this overarching mindset just creates an underlying foundation of gratitude because you appreciate that that's just a part of the journey of creating something new and different for yourself, which was a very surprising, I guess, realization for me. And it really does help in those moments to just trust and surrender with that underlying sense of gratitude. The fifth one is mindfulness. Now, if anyone listening really struggles, and this is hands down something I really, really struggle with, being present and patient, I've found this mindset shift when I really sink into it, when I take the time to be mindful and really think about what is the purpose of this happening in my life? Why would I make myself be going through this challenge? Why would I have authored this into my own story? It helps me be very, very mindful and present because you are removing the noise of what that could mean about you, what the emotion is telling you that it means about you. Maybe it's tied to different limiting beliefs you have, but really asking yourself this question anchors you into the present moment and reminds you that you are in the midst of a challenge to overcoming something or entering that next level. And so this was a really nice way for me to combat my impatience, which is something I still to date struggle with. And I really love like learning about all these different tools or just simple shifts that help me combat that because it's just an inner struggle for me. If I, if I linger in that impatience, again, I sit in this victim mentality. Why aren't things happening sooner? Why hasn't this happened already? Why hasn't it happened the way I thought it was going to happen? And so asking myself this question, thinking about it on a really deep level. And for you, that might look like meditation, might look like journaling, it might just look like sitting there pondering it. Really helps you be a lot more mindful and present as you move through the process. And the sixth one is creativity. So you might find in the exercise of asking yourself, why would I author this into my own story? Why would I put myself through this challenge? You start to get really creative about what that means in your life, what that means for your future endeavors. Uh, you find new ways to write your own narrative, which was a really nice practice and I guess byproduct of me engaging in this exercise because I really started to get creative about different challenges, their role, what that could mean for where I was going. And it's actually quite an exciting process. So these are six things you might find if you, upon reflection of things you've been through in the past, maybe things you're going through now that you're ready to kind of take this bird's eye view perspective on may all be things that apply to the way you look at things. But I really wanted to take the time to share this reframe because as I said, it's just been such a powerful way for me to look at challenges because challenges, obstacles, difficult moments, hardships, they're not things we can escape. They're not things that we live life without. And if you're someone who is striving for bigger things for yourself, who want to create a life on your own terms, who want to grow and develop as a person, you are going to experience these challenges. And when I talk about balance on the podcast, it's never about having this equilibrium, neutral state 24 seven, where everything appears to be in harmony. Balance for me is actually having the tools such as these mindset shifts to help us actually navigate the ebbs and flows. So when things are low, it's how do you bring yourself back up to um, a neutral state? How do you actually appreciate that that low is a part of your journey? How do you understand what's going on in your life and be present and be more mindful versus when you're at a high, how do you actually appreciate and celebrate that too? So for me, balance is all about this beautiful dance between the highs and lows in life. And this particular mindset shift through what I've read and learned through Eckhart Tolle has been one of the most profound ones that I've shared on the podcast. It's been one of the most profound ones that I myself have embraced and adopted. And it's really, really helped me not face less challenges, but dictate what those challenges mean for me and my life and just take a completely new approach and perspective towards them. 
If this episode has helped you and you really like this mindset shift and you are going to try it, drop us a comment below. I'd love to hear what you guys thought of it. Is this something you've heard of before? Have you come across Eckhart Tolle in your own readings or just learning or scrolling on YouTube? It'd be really interesting to see if it resonates with anybody else. And I'm excited for you guys to give it a go if it is the first time you're hearing it because it's been indescribably powerful in terms of how I show up for myself and in terms of navigating and creating the life that I want for myself too. So that's it from me, guys. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss next week's interview. It's our first one of season four and we have an incredible guest list lined up for the next coming month. So I'm really excited to dive into the season with you all and I'll see you all next week for another interview. Until then, stay balanced.